So, of course, uh, the top story for us on the program this morning is a breaking news story. The National Bureau of Statistics releasing August inflation data. We saw the CPI, which measures, measures inflation, increased by 0.5% to 17.6%. Food index is up 0.6% to 16.4%. And the core sub-index, that's uh, price movements recorded by the all items, less farm produce increasing 0.3% to 17.2%. And for the inflation, uh, according to the Bureau of Statistics, education and transport services were among those divisions responsible for the accelerating pace of the inflation number. And, you know, it's about time to go back to school. So we're talking back to school at a time of economic recession. And a number of workers, uh, particularly in the public sector, finding it uh, difficult to pay salaries or pay school fees uh, because of salaries being owed them. Now, we know that uh, most schools have not cut back or, or any other of the items on their back-to-school list despite what we're going through in the economy. So what do you need to do at this time to meet the demand of going back to school for your children? Should you be borrowing? Is it too late to plan? Well, managing personal finances and back to school in a recession is what Wale Olusi, investment analyst with AfriInvest, joins me now to talk about. Good morning to you, Wale. Thank you so much for joining me on the program. Good morning, Harriet. So, I would definitely not start this conversation about education without asking you what your thoughts are with regards to this new inflation numbers. And incidentally, education was, you know, <laughs> listed as one of the reasons for the accelerating pace. Well, I don't think there are surprises. Inflation has, you know, continued on the, you know, northward throughout the year uh, since December. Um, and we've seen different episodes, you know, being the driver. And of course, the latest one being, I mean, education, I mean, incidentally, pop out as one of the, you know, major drivers. So there are no indication. The pressure in the economy has been really massive so far in the year. And I think prices have, you know, responded appropriately to that. And um, yeah, students are resuming to school now. I, I think we should expect some adjustment coming from that sector as well. Hmm. Even though education was listed as one of those responsible. So it's back to school. <laughs> with mixed feelings for most. Um, what should Nigeria be planning for now? As to plan, uh, I think the first thing, um, the first reaction to that will be that for workers in the public um, sector, many of them um, are being owed several months of salary. So, of course, it's a difficult time for them. I think what you probably will be expecting from there is the readjustment of expenses coming from major households. Now, what are the school fees of your children and how much are you paying? Um, are you going to be looking at, you know, realigning some of these expenses? Are you considering, you know, moving your kids from some of the schools whose school fees are higher to some more affordable school if you can afford the quality? If the quality is not, you know, something that is so different. I think some other people will probably be considering moving their children from private schools to public school so that you can just meet up with some of this thing. Um, other consideration is other costs that you can do away with, probably school bus and uh, maybe uh, um, feeding. Uh, some people will probably want to say, okay, maybe I'll be dropping my children in school instead of paying extra expenses for, for school bus. So these are some of the realities that the economy is bringing to the household and they want to readjust to some of these things so that they can, you know, keep up their basic basic needs. But then you also have to remember that these uh, these schools are run by people as well who also need to have mm -hmm. money in the pocket. So what are the key challenges at this time for school operators? Well, for school operators, and, and if you look at the, uh, the, the, the scenario I've painted, I think they also will have to adjust. Um, the, the, the usual thing you want to do in a recession because, uh, you know, the, the, the old costs um, uh, value chain is already higher. Uh, you, you probably want to expect schools to increase their fee, but that might not really happen if you look at the reaction of the parents mm -hmm. to that. So maybe some of them to keep their children in school, to keep their pupils and students in school, they may want to review some of this school fee um, so that they can discourage 
you know, parents from moving their schools, their, their, their wards to other schools that might not be paying as much. So some of them might want to consider that, or they may want to, you know, come up with a meeting, a PTA meeting with children, tell them the challenges they are going through, and both parties can, you know, find a way to, you know, <laughs> because um, for us in the financial industry, what we've been ad advising many of the companies is to cut costs at the moment because revenue is not coming in as much. Mm -hmm. Now, if the school proprietors are not going to be cutting costs in terms of laying off some of their teachers, then they have to find a way around it. And that will basically be keeping the children in school, speaking with the teachers and the parents as to how they can manage the current situation. But you're because saying, you, you know, sorry to cut you, Wally, a lot of these you know, schools will argue with you that the reason why they're increasing the school fees is one, because they need to pay teachers, yeah. they need to also pay their taxes. They, they need to and pay they teachers. Are, are the teachers asking the for costs? higher salaries? They may be asking for higher salaries, but even the, 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 the people in the public sector, their problem at the moment is not whether they are going to be getting a higher wage rate, but paying the you know, backlogs that they are being owed. So salaries are not being increased from the public sector. So the proprietor want to, might want to argue that, I mean, where is this money going to come from? So if um, parents are going to be moving their award from, say, private school to public school so that they can afford education or some less, you know, uh, paying schools, then the strategy for many of these proprietors is probably to look at how can we realign some of these fees so that we can keep paying you rather than lay you off and we can keep the children in school. So there's a lot of uh, reality check in the system, a lot of readjustment of expenditure expenses so that you know, the system can continue to work. What kind of strategies, although there are some that have actually been able to manage to pay school fees, but True. for those who can't and who are looking for op options, some of them might be looking at uh, Ponzi schemes or pyramid schemes, which has been you know, really uh, holding sway lately. At this time, what investment saving packages or emergency funds to do you think that um, people can enter into to hedge against paying school fees next, next term? So everything still boils down to you know, adjusting to the current uh, economic reality. And it's funny how we are discussing this now that the economy is in recession already. Now, is the financial plan, and it's actually better to plan this over a long period of time. It's sad we are, we are already in this recession and now we are discussing this. But, I mean, it's, it's never too late to do what is right. I think the, the, the reality is that people should have a financial plan. You have, there, there is this saying in finance world that you should pay yourself first out of all your income if you're a salary earner, for example. You that's if your salary is regular. Well, if you're, that's why I said if you're a salary earner. So, okay, public sector, I mean, it's not that regular. But if you have a culture of saving over the years, you have a savings plan, you have an emergency fund that you can always call when there's an emergency, and you have uh, maybe an investment vehicle that you're putting some of your money into again. So, but the problem at the moment is that you can't even you know, pay some of these things. So the point is realigning your expenses. What are your key items when it comes to expenses? Um, is it food? How do you eat? Do you eat out or you, you do home cooking? Maybe it's time to start cooking. And it can also be a good time to be borrowing. Exactly. It's not a good time to be borrowing because interest rates are high. CBN is saying 14%. We are not sure what they will do on, uh, on Monday and Tuesday. And banks' lending rate is above 20% at the moment. So it might not be the best time. So at times you, you want to look at your expenses, you want to look at your assets, which of these can you realign to free up cash. If you, have, if, if you stack money in savings account, maybe you should have it, put some in time deposit account. In 90 days or 180 days, you can actually earn some more on, on it so that you can free up some more cash. So these are some of the strategies I think um, also should be looking at at the moment. If you, you know, have some other asset that you don't really need but you're just keeping it there, what can you do with it? Maybe it's also time to, you know, earn some extra income. Ah. Can you do, <laughs> can you do um, a part-time job? Uh -huh. you know? In a recession? But In a recession, yeah. Okay. I mean, some people can take well, weekend. So okay. these are some of the things that I think um, also it can look at All right. in a recession. Wale, thank you so much for coming on the program this morning it's, it's and talking to us about personal finance management.